This week, activists in Southern California are drawing attention to what they call secret negotiations taking place for a free trade deal shaping up in the Asia Pacific region. The Trans Pacific Free Trade Agreement could affect policies in Malaysia, Australia, Peru, Vietnam, the United States, and other countries with vast implications for labor, the environment, and public health. FSRN sat down with Tim Robertson in downtown Los Angeles. He's the director of the California Free Trade Coalition. Tim Robertson, welcome to FSRN. Thanks for having me. First, tell us about these negotiations taking place in Los Angeles. Who is participating and what is on the table? Well, you mentioned all the countries. So trade negotiators from all of those countries are meeting in Los Angeles and San Diego uh, this week uh, rather quietly uh, to discuss some of the more specific issues around this this Trans-Pacific Free Trade Agreement. They're going to be talking about intellectual property issues, uh, labor protections, environmental protections, rules of origins, and a couple other of the more specific issues. And let's get into some of those issues. According to the Obama administration's Office of the U.S. Trade Representative, the talks have now achieved broad outlines of an agreement, which include, quote, industrial goods, agriculture and textiles, as well as rules on intellectual property, technical barriers to trade, labor and environment. What are your primary concerns? Well, they talk a lot about these commercial issues, um, you know, lowering tariffs and industrial goods exchange. Um, But when you really look at these deals, you find a broad swath of corporate handouts. Um, When they talk about intellectual property, um, we're talking about things like big pharmaceutical companies getting uh, negotiating extensions in their patents. Um, When we look and, you know, try and, you know, follow this down the rabbit hole, we find that, you know, it's making it harder and harder for people who have AIDS or tuberculosis in some of these developing countries or or um, low-income communities here in the United States to have access to you know, generic medications. Um, you know, all of this is so that you know, they can continue selling their top-line, newly patented, slightly formulated versions of AIDS medications and make the most money possible, which is actually a death sentence to a lot of these people in, in developing communities that have you know, these very manageable diseases. We'll talk ab- about that more for a moment, the, how this could affect access to affordable medication in these developing countries and how what impact that could have on people's public health well among the 600 corporate advisors that are at the table uh, have access to these negotiations uh, in contrast to the very few people from civil society who do are a lot of high-paid corporate lobbyists from the big pharmaceutical companies there's a lot from you know big agricultural companies, uh, big manufacturing firms, and the Chamber of Commerce. You know they're all at the table having their say, and what they're doing is using each of these chapters, the intellectual property chapter, you know labor standards, rules of origin, to you know, kind of manipulate the system. You know to to take power away from from you know our government, our elected officials, uh, and and to you know just tweak the rules so that um, you know so that they can win on this large corporate scale and make a little bit more money. Um, what we're concerned about is the fact that I mentioned that civil society, members of Congress, um, members of the media like yourself, have very little access to these negotiations to fight for workers and to make sure that um, you know, these corporate interests don't totally outweigh um, you know, the voices and the interests of, of, of people. We're talking about global scale here and regional uh, players and how this could affect many different uh, people across the globe. But let's bring it to a local level here. How could a deal like this affect workers or communities in California? It's a great question. You know, we know from NAFTA and previous free trade agreements that these deals cost jobs. You know, there's direct evidence that NAFTA alone costs 700,000 American jobs. And we've seen Along with NAFTA and China joining the WTO, we've seen uh, over 6 million manufacturing jobs nationwide disappear just this century uh, in the last 10 years. That's one in three manufacturing jobs. You know, we've seen kind of the way these deals work as a, um, you know, kind of offshoring mechanism. And when we're looking at some of the countries involved, Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, a lot of people are thinking that these are going to be low-cost alternatives to China as, as some workers there start to um, you know, get a little bit more of a voice on the workplace. And you know, that's, that's very terrifying from a not only a, you know American jobs perspective, from a, but from a human rights perspective. 
These deals put downward pressure on wages here and around the world uh, and human rights. And, and, we, and you know, these corporations that are in these negotiations are looking for ways to save money. And if that means going somewhere where labor standards are cheaper and we can't use these kind of agreements to rise, raise such standards, um, then it, it's not going to be helpful for anyone except for the very, very, uh, you know, one percent, if you will, that uh, will be making money off of these deals. Lately, there's been lots of attention on anti-piracy measures. In Europe, there's the ACTA, and in the U.S., the Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA. They've been criticized for threatening freedom of expression and online innovation. This deal is set to protect digital technologies. According to the Obama administration, uh, it says that it will protect U.S. company interests. If this deal were to move forward in its current form, how could it affect digital information? Uh, it absolutely could. Uh, a lot of people are seeing the uh, intellectual property chapter of this uh, to be something like a SOPA 2.0, um, just everything that um, negotiators wanted in uh, in ACTA but couldn't actually get, and the questions of whether or not internet internet freedoms are, are being uh, are being challenged um, are, are very real. And and as we uh, learn more and more about the negotiations, we see that uh, that's a really that's a really realistic threat, and and we're concerned about that. Uh, it's just one more reason that we're trying to, um, you know, make sure people are aware of this and make sure that we can put pressure on uh, the negotiators um, from both the national negotiators and the corporate uh, lobbyists who are who are there uh, pressing for these kind of provisions. So. Tim Robertson is the director of the California Free Trade Coalition. He spoke to us about negotiations taking place in Los Angeles on the Trans-Pacific Free Trade Agreement. Tim Robertson, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.